My name is Mrs. Buchanan and I am a third grade teacher at Fountain City Elementary School. I want to give a quick hello to the Room 300 Pet Cats. If you are watching, I miss you and I'm excited that you're watching today. We can become better readers today together. But no matter what Knox County School you go to, I'm excited you're here. I'm really excited to spend some time with you and we're going to be reading, talking, and writing. And I love doing all three of those things because they make you a stronger, more fluent reader. And I think it's really exciting that we get a chance to keep our reading brains growing, even though we're in a little bit different environment. We're not in our usual classroom right now, um, but it's kind of cool that we're in a different environment. We get to do it just a little bit differently today. So I'm excited you're here with me. Now, I want you to know that you may have already read the text that we are going to read today, or you might not have, and that's okay if you've read it before, uh, because rereading the same text more than once is actually a great thing to do for your reading brain. We might read the same text for different reasons or purposes each time that we read, and it's just like when we watch a movie more than once. We always learn something and notice something new each time we do, so don't worry if you've read this text before, and don't worry if you haven't read this text before. Either way, we are going to to be stronger readers today. So I need your help. I need your help solving a mystery. And I'm wondering if you can help me out with that. You might already know that someone who solves a mystery could be called a detective. Maybe you don't know that another word for detective is a sleuth. And a sleuth can also mean a bloodhound, which is a type of dog that's used for tracking clues. And that kind of makes sense, because do we think that we're going need to need to track some clues if we want to solve a mystery? Yeah, we would have to do that. So if you're interested in assisting me, which I hope you are, I would be maybe the super sleuth, and you could be a junior sleuth hound. That's a compound word that I made up. What do you think? Okay, so let's get to it. I'd like to share with you a letter that you can see on the screen. Would you read along with me as I read the letter? Okay. Dear Junior Sleuth Hound, mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be a mystery in a faraway land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So what do you do to solve a mystery? Become a sleuth hound. Look for clues ask interesting questions, then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read this book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck. Okay, so it sounds like we will be able to read closely today and look for clues in a text to put together to help us understand what we read so that we can solve some mysteries together. What do you think? I want you to look at the picture clues that are on this page. Hmm. What do you see? Do you see the camera? Maybe the keys and the flashlight? I see a compass too. How could these be tools for a detective? or a sleuth to use. Hmm. Did you think that maybe the flashlight could be used to better see clues in dark places? And maybe the camera could take pictures so that we could carefully look at those pictures and find some clues? I think you might be right. Now, of course, being a super sleuth involves several steps. So I want you to take a look at the steps next to the letter we just read. And I noticed that those steps are divided into four categories. They're highlighted over there. Do you see them? The first one I see is look for clues and then ask questions. Third, I see make your case. And then of course the last one says prove it. Hmm. Now as sleuths, we're gonna have to look for clues. So that first one makes sense. Now, where do you think good readers look for their clues? Did you say in the text? 
that's exactly where we will look to find clues. They look for clues in the text. They also look for important or main ideas to put it all together when they read. The next step said, ask questions. Hmm, why do you think a sleuth when they're reading would ask questions? Did you say that asking questions helps you better understand what you read? You're right. Being a curious reader is great and it helps your reading brain grow. So we will ask and answer questions today as we read. Now the third one says make your case. Hmm, do you think that's a case like a container that you put things in? That doesn't really make sense. Make your case. If you thought this is a multi-meaning word, you are right. When detectives make a case, they use the clues that they found to put it together to tell what they think. So we will do that when we answer questions about the text that we read and when we complete tasks after we're done reading. And then the last one says prove it. Now that means we are going to use details from the text to show or prove what we have learned today. So we can get really creative when we show what we've learned after reading. And I can't wait to share with you some of the really exciting tasks that you are going to get to complete after we read together today. All right. Now on this page, you might see unit four. And under that, do you see where it says one of a kind? Can you think of another word that you have learned this year that means the same as one of a kind? You might have thought of the word unique, right? Unique means unlike others or even one of a kind. So go ahead and read to yourself what the sleuth hound is saying to you in his little bubble there where that second arrow is pointing. Take a moment and read that out loud or to yourself silently. Okay, so it looks like we will focus on finding clues about how something is unique or one of a kind. Hmm, I wonder what we'll be reading about to find out if it's unique or one of a kind and how it's unique or one of a kind. Let's take a look at the text. What's the title of this passage? Yes, the title is Street Games. Hmm. I know what games are, and I know what a street is, so what might street games be? Did you think that maybe they are games that you play maybe outside or even on a street? That's kind of what I was thinking too. I wonder if we can read in the text and see if that's true. Will you track along with me as I read the first few sentences? Great, here we go. Hopscotch capture the flag, and marbles are some street games that kids play. Street games are games that have names and rules and have been around for years. Your parents and grandparents probably played these games too. Wow, I think we were right about what a street game is. Junior Sleuth Hound, can you find some specific examples of street games that the author gives? All right, I think we can take a look back at what we read and find some specific examples. Take a moment. Right, did you say hopscotch? How about capture the flag? And marbles. Those are all street games that the author mentions in those first few sentences. I haven't played all of those, but I think I've heard of all of them. How about you? What else does the author tell us about street games? Let's take a look back at those first few sentences. Yes, it says they have names, they have rules, and they have been around for a long time. It actually says our parents and our grandparents might have also played these games when they were kids. That's pretty interesting. 
I'm gonna read on. Will you read along with me? And as we read, let's look for clues about how one of these street games that the author told us about might have been invented. Ready? Track along with me as I read. Legend has it that hopscotch began during the Roman Empire. Soldiers trained on courts 100 feet long, 30 meters, to improve their footwork. They hopped down the hopscotch court in full armor. Wow. We learned about which specific street game Yes, we learned about hopscotch in that portion of text. The text says legend has it, which means people in stories tell us that hopscotch was invented how. Can you take a look back and find out? Right, the text says the Roman soldiers long, long ago invented it to improve their Footwork. Hmm. I wonder what footwork might be. Seems like a compound word. Foot work. Maybe this is how they moved around on their feet. How their feet worked. That kind of seems to make sense. The text also says they did this in full armor. What's armor? Did you say that it's the gear that soldiers wear to stay safe? If you did, you're right. Now, I know that gear long ago was really, really heavy. So that must have been a tough game of hopscotch if they were jumping around and practicing their footwork in their heavy gear, their heavy armor. And then the text that we just read together says, children then started playing hopscotch. Can you think of how we have learned that hopscotch is unique? Remember, that was our job to find out how something is unique or one of a kind. So how is hopscotch unique compared to other games that you have played? Take a moment and think about that. Maybe you said that hopscotch is unique because you get to move or jump around in a certain way in order to win. That does sound unique compared to other games I play like video games or board games. Not all of those involve me hopping around. So that is pretty unique. Now, I'm going to pause for a few moments while you read the next paragraph. It's that section that has the red bracket next to it. As you read, you can do it out loud or silently to yourself, but here's what you're gonna think about as you read. Think about what the game, Capture the Flag, is all about and how it is a unique game. Ready? Go ahead. Okay, if you are not done reading yet, you can easily pause this video for a moment, finish reading that paragraph, and then start playing again when you are ready. Now, the author says that Capture the Flag has its origins in the United States, and origins are related to where or how something first begins. So how did the idea of the game Capture the Flag begin? Let's look back. Yes, it's related to the idea of soldiers capturing or getting an enemy's flag during a war. 
Can you find the word opponent? Take a moment, see if you can find the word opponent. Sounds like it has a schwa there a little bit. Do you see it there on the screen? It's underlined now. Sleuth Hounds, let's reread that sentence to see if we can find some clues for what the word opponent might mean. Let's reread that sentence. At the same time, each team tries to capture the flag of their opponent. Hmm. So what is each team trying to do? Yes, they're trying to find a flag. Whose flag are they trying to find? It's not their own flag, is it? It says it's the flag of their opponent. So opponent must mean the team that you're playing against in the game. Yeah, that's what that means. Well, that sounds like a really unique one of a kind game. What do you think makes capture the flag unique compared to other games you know? Take a moment and think about that. Have some ideas for how that game seems unique or different, or maybe even one of a kind compared to some other games that you play? I do too. Now I'm going to stay quiet for a moment while you read the next paragraph. It's got a bracket next to it on your screen. That's the paragraph we're talking about. So as you read, here's what I want you to focus on. I want you to learn about the game of marbles and be thinking about how that game is unique. Go ahead and read. Okay, I'm going to start talking again and we're going to talk about it, but if you are not done, remember you can pause and play when you are ready. So I read that the game of marbles also goes all the way back to the Roman Empire, to the time of the Romans. So this is another game, like the author said in that first paragraph, that has been around for many, many years. So how was this game played? Let's look back in the text. Did you find it? Yeah, it says players rolled a large marble onto the ground and then tried to hit that large marble with smaller marbles. So that kind of sounds fun. Sounds like you'd have to be aiming for those mar that large marble with your smaller marbles. Now the author tells us that kids now play many different versions of marble games. So are marble games unique compared to other games that you usually play? Remember, that's our job as sleuth hounds, to find ways that something is unique or one of a kind in our text today. So how is the game of marbles unique compared to other games that you know? Got some ideas? All right, now let's read that last paragraph together. Ready? Here we go. Street games continue to entertain kids of all ages. Most likely, your kids will play these games sometimes too. Wow. Why does the author say your kids will most likely play street games too? How does the author know that? 
sleuth hounds, I want you to think back in the text that we just read. Think about what the author told us about street games. Is there any text evidence that would support the idea that even your kids will someday play these games too? That's an interesting thought. We'll definitely have to dig into text evidence to find some proof that the author might be able to predict that even your children might play those same street games. Okay, now that we've closely read this text, we're going to look down at the sleuth work. Do you see it there in the corner? I've got an arrow pointing to it now. Let's take a look. The first one says gather evidence. Let's read together. Many street games have been around for a long time. Make a list of evidence that supports this statement. So here you could get a piece of paper and a pencil and go through the text. You can even mark in the text if you have a paper copy of it. Find some evidence that would help us know that street games have been around for a long time. So we need to go through the text and find some details that support that. That's our first task. The next one says, ask questions. Remember, that's what good readers do. And we've been doing that as we've read this text. But let's see, let's read what it wants us to do now. What questions might you ask your parents or grandparents about the street games they played as kids? Write down three questions. So we can write down three questions we have about street games that maybe our parents played or our grandparents played, and we can write them down on a piece of paper. Then, here's my next little challenge for you. Could you ask some of the adults that you know? Could you ask your parents or maybe grandparents or aunt or uncle, someone that you know about those questions and see if they can answer your questions about street games? That would be neat. And then the last one says, make your case. Remember, we were talking about how good detectives do that. They take everything that they've learned and they put it together to make their case. Let's read what that wants us to do. Will these games still be played by future generations of kids? State reasons for your opinion. So this is an opinion writing prompt, isn't it? It wants to know if you think these games will still be played by future generations of kids. So kids in the future, like the author said, maybe even your own children, do you think that they would still play these street games? That's really cool. We could actually write to that opinion writing prompt. We could make a nice solid paragraph with that uh, writing prompt. Okay, but here's the cool thing. We're going to wrap up everything we did. So take a look. We're going to recap what we just did today in this lesson. We learned first what a sleuth was and how we could be reading sleuths. We also read, we read about street games today, and we really focus on how those street games are one of a kind or how they are unique. We now have some tasks that we just looked at, three different tasks that we can work on now that we've read the text. But are you ready for a challenge? Do you want to see my challenge task for you? I'm really excited. Okay, here we go. I want you to try to create your own street game. Doesn't that sound cool? So you are going to these are the things you're going to have to do to make it a really great street game. First, it has to be unique, right? It has to be unique compared to lots of other games that you know. So this is where you get to be really creative and come up with a game that's different compared to a lot of other games you are familiar with. We have to write specific rules, right? If we're creating a game, we have to have clear, specific rules so that whoever is playing our game knows exactly what the rules are. 
And with those rules means we probably have to write some steps, right? We have to write some clear steps. We have to put them in order in the correct sequence, right? So that anybody playing our game knows exactly the steps that they will go through to play the game. And here's another idea for you. You can draw pictures next to each step to show what it would look like when someone is playing. So make it even more clear and illustrate your steps. And then when it's safe to, and when you have permission from an adult, you can act out your game. You can actually try out your game, maybe with your siblings, maybe with your parents, right? Go ahead and give it a try and see if you have all the rules and all the steps that you need. You can go back and make changes if you think there's something that you were missing and see how your game plays out. Maybe you will create a super unique game that could become a game kids play for many, many years to come. You might create a really cool new game, street game. Well, that's it for now. I look forward to learning again, and I'm excited about how hard you worked today. You worked really hard as a reader. Um, one thing I do want to challenge you to do, remember we said the importance of reading a text more than once, so don't forget to go back and reread the text to help your reading brain grow. You could read it to a brother, to a sister, to someone in your family. You could even reread it just to yourself. I want you to make sure you do that. That helps us become stronger, more fluent readers when we read a text more than once. And I bet if you reread the text, it will help you complete all of these tasks that we now have that we can complete after we've read. So that will definitely help you out. Well, again, my name is Mrs. Buchanan. I really, really hope that you loved this reading lesson today. I'm so glad that I got to spend just a little bit of time with you. And I hope you have a wonderful and a unique rest of your day. Bye-bye for now.